will designate the amendment. Amendment to the co committee plan offered by Mr. Garrett, page 234, line 24. Unanimous because then considered as read. The securities and insert amendment the securities. I'm starting only for committee. Uh, the, uh, thank you. Thank you. Committee. There we go. Thanks a lot. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Mr. Chairman, you know, the U.S. capital markets have obviously been experiencing significant yeah. turmoil in the last yeah. year. Yeah, and that's a good idea. This has required policymakers to examine and address many issues with that's right. careful and deliberate that's consideration. Right. Now, one of the policies that we've been debating, and I think many here agree, which is the concept of risk retention for lenders and entities involved in the securitization process. At the same time as this, however, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, or FASB, is considering far-reaching changes to securitization accounting standards during this challenging time. At the end of this year, FASB's new securitization accounting rule, which is FASB uh, FAS 166 and 167, they're scheduled to go into effect. And these new rules will eliminate qualified special purpose entities, which are the primary securitization accounting vehicles for asset-backed securities. They will also change the criteria for the sales treatment and consolidation of financial assets and apply all these change retroactively. Well, as we all know, we don't legislate in a vacuum. We are not the only body here setting rules. So what we do here, taken together with other changes, might compound problems or have even serious unintended um, negative consequences elsewhere. So as regulators and policymakers continue to examine the state of our financial markets and cautiously contemplate improvements, changes in accounting standards is another aspect that we have to take into consideration. The new securitization requirement in this legislation and the changes by FASB to the securitization accounting rules will undoubtedly impact both the U.S. financial sector and securitization, which provides substantial financing options to consumers and businesses alike. For example, let me explain what I'm talking about here. The $9 trillion U.S. securitization markets, that includes commercial and residential mortgages, student loans, automobile loans, credit cards, debt, et cetera, currently does not consolidate the issuing entities used in securitization. But proposed changes could require consolidation by many, if not all, of these entities, which will impact both capital and liquidity. As such, it is critical that policymakers and market participants fully examine all policy options and implications of any changes to securitizations during these challenging times. Uh, Will the gentleman yield? Uh, sure. I thank the gentleman for this. I, it is exactly what we ought to do, and I support the amendment. Does that mean that, uh, the chair doesn't want to hear my three last pages? <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> I will uh, submit them for the record and submit them over to your office. I, I will read them over Christmas. Thank you. The question now is on the amendment offered by the gentleman of New Jersey. Those in favor will say aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The gentleman of Illinois is now recognized to offer an amendment.